Hi, everyone. I wanted to give a quick introduction to AI Suite, a project that Andrew Ang just released on GitHub. Now, I work directly with Andrew at Deep Learning AI, where I lead special projects. My work with Andrew is largely innovation-driven, and it's built, or built around things that are not business as usual, so topics that are a little bit atypical. Now, this project, however, is neat because it's not only internal, like most of my work. In fact, similar to our translation project that we released in June, this project is designed to benefit the broader AI community. It's a pretty typical example of the atypical work that makes up my normal uh, days with Andrew. Now, AI Suite is an open source library that standardizes and simplifies the process of switching between multiple LLM providers. We follow the OpenAI interface and use either HTTP endpoints or SDKs to interact with those end providers. I'm really excited to share the software with you because it's been hugely helpful for me. But I'm also excited to share this with you because I think it's going to be very helpful for my students. I teach both at Berkeley and SMU. I think it's going to help them work with a variety of different LLM providers, use a variety of different LLM models, and do so in a way that's standardizable and consistent. Now, this work, of course, wouldn't be possible without Andrew's original insight, his, his first view, and then the prototype that he built. But it also wouldn't be possible without the hard work of our open source collaborators. Rohit, Jeff, Kevin, Ryan, thank you. We really appreciate your work. Their social media links are below. I hope you enjoy this demo. So let's go ahead and start. AI Suite is this light wrapper. It's de designed to provide a unified interface, and you're going to be seeing this unification quite clearly from the very beginning. We're going to be jumping across several different LLM providers in a way that's pretty effortless. So the first thing we'll need to do is install the AI software. Again, we'll be using a Google Colab. I'll provide a link for this in the notes at the bottom. We're going to end up downloading a whole collection, including some that may already be satisfied based upon your environment. Note that we use this brackets all to ensure that we're ready for all of the providers. And I'm just going to go ahead and hide this up because we don't, we're not too concerned about that. Since we're going to be doing some printing and we're printing inside of Google Colab, I decided to write just a quick pretty print function. Um, I'm wrapping and sort of hiding away this, this pretty print to make it easy. And I'm fixing my line width at 80. This is designed just so that we can read the data quite easily within, within Colab. So there's nothing really exciting here if you're interested in LLMs, but it's helpful. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our API keys. Now, in a normal environment, we'd be using a dot environment variable or a file that would store our API keys. But since we're working in Google Colab, we're not going to do that at all. I'm going to run this, and you can see it says, enter your API key here, and I'm going to go grab mine. And now I'll come back and paste that API key into my window, hit enter. And now in the same way, if I had been using a dot environment file, I just have a global variable that says grok underscore API key. Now, we're going to use this chat interface, in this case, a pretty simple chat interface, and this is the minimal working example. We're going to start working with grok, um, and specifically, we'll be using a llama model, where the model responds to this user's input. And this is sort of the minimal working example for how to interact with AI Suite. So we'll import AI Suite as AI, initialize a client, ai.client, We'll create a messages, and this is pretty standard from the OpenAI syntax. You know, your helpful agent answers with brevity. We're just going to ask, you know, the model to say hello to it. And we're going to use this client chat completions model, which is, again, pretty standard, to pass in our messages and get a response. And we'll print out that response. And as you can see, our model responds by saying, how can I assist you? Now, since the work that I'm going to be doing here is a single call, to the LLM, I don't want to have to deal with all of this um, syntax. It becomes a little bit annoying. I'm going to actually wrap all of this up into a single function. And since I'm only having a single ask and answer response, not a chat conversation, I'm going to call mine ask. And the reason for that is there is no sense of memory here. This is a single call of the LLM. And each time I call this ask function, it's going to initialize a new client that uses the model that either is provided to it or I provide. And we'll pass in the system message, which just says you're a helpful agent, the message um, that we're, we're passing into the ask question. And then we'll just wrap up the response and return the response on its own. So this is a little bit less functionality, but I find this works pretty well for me and the kinds of interactions that I'm working for. And if I now run the model and at, run the ask command, what's the capital of Japan? Of course, it says, hello, the capital of Japan is Tokyo. 
Now, the real value of AI Suite is its ability to run multiple different models. And to do so, what we're going to do is we're going to actually go and create uh, an example that uses both OpenAI and Anthropic. So I'm going to have to enter my API keys here. And then my Anthropic API key here. And now I'm ready to try and confirm, you know, sort of play, play around with three different providers uh, and their own individual models. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, walk through a scenario where we ask, who is your creator first of Croc uh, with the default parameter for model? Secondly, I'll ask, who is your creator for the model that's created by Anthropic uh, with Claude? And finally, ask, who is your creator uh, with the model of OpenAI? And we'll see how well that performs. And we see that, in fact, Grok responds that I was created by Meta. So it's referring to the Llama model rather than the provider, but the actual model. Uh, Anthropic recognizes that it was created by Anthropic. And of course, OpenAI recognizes that it was created by OpenAI as well. So now we can see that we're working with three different providers at just really the single change uh, of a parameter. So while this is all well and good, what we're really often interested in is comparing different types of responses or different types of models. So what I'll start first with is a single provider, but with different Llama models. So we've got a variety of diff different models that are available on Grok. We're going to create some RET, some return uh, list that will hold on to the values that I'm going to be getting back. And for each of our models, right, single provider, but multiple models, I'm going to ask them to write a short one sentence explanation of the origins of AI. And I'll pass in Grok and I'll append to it the individual model names. So each time I, I run this, I'll be adding to the return variable with a single sentence that is uses the Grok model and, excuse me, uses Grok as a provider and then uses a different model from Llama. And then we are going to print those out given the individual model name and its corresponding response. So here we can see we've got Llama that's run and we've got a history that goes back to 1956 with Dartmouth. We've got another history that says mid 20th century, the 1950s. So we get little bits of variance across the different model providers based upon the size and what the expectations of those models are. But this gives you a very handy way of within the same provider, shifting about and looking at different models to decide what uh, particular model you'd like to work with. So that might be, that is you know, possible in other, other frameworks. What's really nice here is we're mostly focused on providing different access to different providers. So what we'll be doing is using one particular model from Grok, one from OpenAI, and one from Anthropic. And in this case, I'm going to um, ask it the same question that I did before, which is, can you quickly write a one short one sentence explanation of the origins of AI? And we'll see that we get the origins of AI in the 1950s. This is Grok, very similar to the last example that we had, but OpenAI gives us a little bit different language. And finally, Anthropic gives us slightly different language as well. Again, for something as simple as a one short, uh, one sentence uh, explanation, perhaps that's not particularly interesting or, or something that um, really you can see a lot of separation, but I bet you have better examples uh, that you've been working on that you'd like to explore with us. So now, what I really want to do is start thinking about how I would really use this in a, in a real world environment, which is very often if I'm interested in classifying or working with different models, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a series of questions or a series of texts that I'm going to provide it to other, uh, to, to the model and then sort of decide which one's better. Is it example one or example two? And so in this case, what I've done is something a little bit atypical. I'm going to use our three models and have one model come up with a question and have the other two models try to answer that question. And so I'll be evaluating the responses to the question. Now, I'm, we'll be using random, and I will shuffle at the start of each loop uh, my providers. So for the first time, I may be using OpenAI to produce the question, and then Grok and Anthropic are compared. The next round, I might be using Grok to start to generate the question, and then OpenAI and Anthropic are compared. And I'm going to just ask you to write a short question that is suitable for asking an LLM. So what are the kinds of questions that we should be asking an LLM? Will the LLM generate that? And then we'll ask our second provider and our third provider to give us short answers to this question. We'll print them out. And then we're going to, as input, capture the user's feedback. So this little cell allows me to generate a question, to generate two answers, and then to collect as a human in the loop what the right answer is. Now, again, we could mess around with this printing left, right, and sideways, but I'm not too worried about that. And here, the first question, delightfully, I didn't set this up, 
is what are the potential benefits and risks of artificial intelligence in healthcare? And what we get for our option one, notice it doesn't tell us which our model is, so it's a little bit blind. We see the improved diagnostics, the risk of privacy. Option two, improved diagnostics, accuracy, and speed. The dangers are biased, stop job displacement. And we can start to get these questions. And if we had a strong feeling uh, about whether one or two was better, we could just answer one or two. And in this case, because I'm not reading very carefully, I would just hit three for indistinguishable. They're equally the same. And I will store this data right up top into a variable that I call best. And the best variable holds on to the results. And so at the end of this process, after I've done this 20 times in this example, or maybe 200, depending on how complicated a comp uh, comparison you were looking to generate, you could go through and do some quick analysis to see, you know, in a blind controlled way, which seemed to be the, the better model for the problem at hand. So I hope this has given you a good introduction to AI Suite and the value that it could bring. I'm certainly excited about this. I know many of the use cases that I've been thinking about would have benefited from a tool like this. And very interested to hear your thoughts. Uh, please follow up in the comments below on LinkedIn, or better yet, make some pull requests against the Git repo. We're really excited to make the software stronger uh, with the needs of our users.